on the fashion tip to continue on the streetwear vibe streetwear vibe streetwear vibe we got this news courtesy of vogue business Bali named Rude Designer first creative director in five years. Big up Rugi. Big up Rugi. Big up Rugi. This is, I said the other day on Twitter, this is confirmation in case you needed it that streetwear is the most dominant um, force and the most important force, especially when it comes to men's fashion at the moment. No one's testing the guys coming from streetwear from what Heron Preston did with Calvin Klein, obviously Virgil at Louis Vuitton, Matthew Williams at Givenchy and obviously running his brand Alix. You've got um, Luke and Lucy, I think from um, OAM, OA, um, from OAMC, who are now heading up Jill Sander, who were formerly designed as a Supreme. Um, who else you got? You got Jerry Lorenzo working with Zegna. Uh, who else have you got out there? You got obviously a Samuel, Samuel Ross doing a Cold War. All these people are sort of, birthed from the school of streetwear or are from that world and have gone obviously to do other things but that world has basically um has basically the birthing crown the school for all these amazing designers who have basically gone and impacted fashion at the highest level even someone like Demna you could say from being traditionally trained in fashion and obviously working under the tutelage of Mason Margiela and obviously Louis Vuitton but he still has that aesthetic that kind of feel that touch that sort of sensibility that comes from streetwear with the hoodies with the jeans with the snapback hats with the t-shirts with the sneakers it's all streetwear adjacent it's all streetwear related and i think this is confirmation if ever that you needed it that the most important designers in menswear specifically are coming from streetwear no other place traditional sort of fashion doesn't really matter they mostly are coming from that streetwear sensibility and it's taking over man this guy, like I said before on Twitter, like, you know, he was designing flipping cigarette shirts and pouches and stuff and, you know, like doing that sort of thing. Very California-esque Americana way, you'd say, right? A, a, a bit, it's a very particular vision, but it's also a very particular style, something that you wouldn't think a a kind of um, story brand like Bayou would want to kind of, you know, tap into. So it Bali, 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 Bali. Well, I keep saying Bali because a play for Man United is called Eric Bali, similar sort of spelling. But yeah, Bally, he's absolutely smashing it. So big up him. And he's only 29 or something as well. So it's absolutely nuts that he's been able to go from screen printing t-shirts to now working, you know, with an actual legitimate fashion brand and presenting stuff at Paris Fashion Week, obviously coming up, I'm assuming. Um, just an amazing achievement, man. Big up this guy. Big up, big up, big up. Even though he did kind of big time me. Back in the day when I was, you know, putting together an online shooting course for a company that I used to work for, I did meet him briefly in LA, I think it might have been, or maybe it was Berlin for like some streetwear trade show. I forgot where it was, somewhere in the world. I went um, for that trip, which was great. That's again, one of the best jobs I had, but also one of the worst. But, you know, we move. <laughs> so if you know, you know, uh, I think I bumped into him and I went to get him on the course. And, you know, at the time, at the time as well, to be fair to him, at the time, Virgil was obviously not the most well-liked guy in streetwear or fashion in general. And I think... He, he didn't wasn't comfortable either being the head of this course he wasn't comfortable ever and he kind of made it difficult to work with at the beginning afterwards we kind of got on a lot more a lot better towards the end but maybe i think because of that other people too that wanted to get involved didn't want to get involved because they felt like virgil's name wasn't the best thing to be associated which is funny because honestly this has happened i'm i'm not going to name names but there were many people who later came out when virgil passed and were like mourning his loss say how important he was in streetwear blah 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 they were the people that were giving me no's or writing very stern email replies back or basically ghosting me completely when i was reaching out about them joining as mentors to basically join in on this course that virgil's putting together they didn't want any parts of it whatsoever so it's funny that these guys are now turning around and you know pretending that there was the guy's biggest supporters it's like it's like his friends i mean all the friends that hang around with him that were or no, some of the friends, but some people you see online that were kind of, you know, mourning aloud and stuff are the same people that, you know, they, you never saw them wearing any of the clothes that he makes. <laughs> so it's like, what? Uh, but yeah, that's a story for another day. But name, um, the point remains, he did kind of big time me when I did ask him to be on a course, but, you know, I get it. I think at the time he must have been what? If he's 29 now, he must have been like 27, 26, running a massive brand like that. Having someone like me trying to you know, beg, hey, can you come on a course? So I, I can't I can't blame people for getting, I can't blame people when they big time you, get, and when you get a bit of context and you figure, okay, he was 27, he's just running his brand. He's like, I get it, I get it. I think if I was that age too, I'd be gassed. I'll be gassed. So he continues here, it says, 
Swiss luxury brand Bali has named 29 year old Rue designer Ru, uh, Ruigi. How do you pronounce his name? Ruigi Villas, Villas Noir. Is he Filipino? I'm sure he is, right? Is he Filipino or is he, or is he not? I don't know. Who knows? Um, the creative director is part of the new repositioning for the 171 year old label. God damn. They need some help, man. Um, the signing of the brand's first creative director in five years was announced by the board and chairman Manuel Martinez in a statement on Tuesday. The is owned by JB and Holdings, a German investment firm of the Ryman family. You know what? Who is the Ryman family? Let's see who the Ryman family is. I don't know who they are. Are they like a well known uh, German family or what? German, German moves its. Who are the Ryman family? Okay, that's what they look like. So if you see this guy in your store, whoa. What, daddy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's move on. 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 Let's scrap. Let's scrap that. Anyway, <laughs> Villasano is currently the founder and creative director of Rude, a luxury streetwear label launched in LA in 2015 with a core Gen Z following. Villasano, Villasano, Villasano. Yes, how you pronounce his name right? Journey from making t-shirts and hoodies as a child in San Fernando Valley to holding a place in Paris Fashion Week. Men's schedule this week has built him a loyal celeb following, including Sweetie, um, Sin Nevar. Who the hell is that? Cynthia Ivaniro, French Montana. Collaboration with brands such as Puma to McLaren have followed. Awesome. Um, You know what's interesting, actually? I'm thinking about it. The great thing about this link up and the great thing about him getting his job similar to when Matthew Williams got the Givenchy job I see a lot of people poo-pooing oh, it should have been even this I saw people online saying oh it should have been Martin Rose it should have been this should have been that it's like you guys will never be happy with it. anyway I'm happy for streetwear because I think streetwear gets so rubbed out by people in fashion that they kind of look down upon it like oh I remember one time when Demna was doing his thing at Vetamore and maybe Virgil was still popping up and kind of coming up I remember watching Show Studio once the original haters Show Studio are full of haters right? especially when they have the panels with flipping industry people they don't buy any of the expensive stuff they talk about they just hate everything because it's not flipping you know peak Maison Margiela it's like things have moved on like start celebrating the people coming up like give them their flowers but I remember once they were doing some show and they'll think you know I think it was maybe towards the end maybe it was the, the, the collection where flipping the DHL shirt was there right I think that was when that caused a lot of controversy and you know that panel obviously went into a meltdown uh, DHL t-shirt is not fashion it's not luxury shut up and I remember one of them saying kind of like you know snarkily oh I can't wait until tailoring makes a comeback and to me it felt like again it's dumb to say but it did feel like a bit of a dog whistle like tailoring what you want tailoring to come back why so you could get rid of the flipping darkies you could get rid of the flipping you know hispanic people the asians the people coming up and basically because that's the only way we can make it we can get into that flipping hallowed especially when it comes to paris fashion week those calendars to get into that infrastructure to use their resources their production all this sort of stuff how else are you going to get there you have to just make it happen with your little cut and sew your little screen printing your little heat press all this sort of stuff iron-ons and then maybe you could build your web to get to that place to obviously enter in and when people are saying, oh, I can't wait for tailoring to make a comeback. Yeah, because you want to get us out there. You don't want anyone that does not look like you out there. And also you want people in there that have the traditional fashion experience. But much like what Matthew Williams has done at Givenchy, it's been less at, it's been less to do with the quality of the work, I feel like, and more so with invigorating with that brand, with new with new blood, with new energy. And basically people talk about it again. Again, it's handy. That Matthew Williams is really talented and good at what he does because I still think he's like a really, really, really high level, um, what would you say, product person. Like he makes really good hardware. He's obviously, his accessories are amazing. The shoes are great. Um, I think the jackets are out of this world. Maybe the overall looks are a bit whatever, but I think the, there are pieces in there that every collection that you'd want to buy. Let's not deny that. And he's obviously got that um, thing where he's got his finger on a pulse and able to kind of tap into what people want at the time, bloody blah, blah, blah. blah. So I think with these brands, they just want to be culturally relevant. Yes, the work needs to be good too, but mostly they just want to be in a conversation. They want to, they want have, they want people to talk about the show. They want the show to be viral. They want there to be content around it for him to invite his star-studded guests. Imagine, I think one of the campaigns for Rude, he had Future on it. Imagine Future opens a show for one of his collections, or Metro Brimming producing the score. All these sort of things are things to make it culturally relevant. Because now, at the moment, to be culturally relevant, you have to be uh, of from the culture. You have to basically basically have some sort of um fan base or a following already and you know he's already got a following of rude who people are going to follow him they're going to want to follow his journey it's going to be amazing it's really really going to be amazing and he's really and again from one of the from what i've seen on social from afar he seems to be one of the 
small group of designers and brand owners who's really kind of um, on it when it comes to his media he's always replying to people he's sharing tweets or uploading it. i mean he's kind of he's, he's part of the you know he's in the he, he's part of gen z he is a gen z person do you know what i mean i'd imagine so i don't sure if he's gen z but regardless um it's a great look man amazing for him the young designer originally from manila which is Filipino, I'm pretty sure, will oversee artistic direction across um, the brand as it moves to boost relevance and accelerate growth, led by CEO Nicholas Giretto, um, who joined in 2014. Villasuna, first collection for Bali, known for its Swiss quality and craftsmanship and leather goods, including men's former shoes, will be debuting on the 2023 seasons. The last creative director, Pablo Capello, oversaw the direction of the brand in 2024 and 2017, but his designs have since been led by heads of footwear, accessories, and reasonable if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken because i remember last time just being curious and going on a deep dive because i'm a flipping demna fanboy and i love everything about him balenciaga Vetema, all that kind of scene this dude pablo coppolo um i'm pretty sure he's at balenciaga now so he left bali to go to balenciaga and i'm pretty sure he does leather goods um so he might have been the guy that did all the hacking gucci uh balenciaga stuff and bags and whatnot so that's pretty cool little tie-in do you know what I mean weirdly enough right there's some distance obviously in between them because he left in 2017 but still it seems like they're somewhat plugged they're somewhat clued in I wonder who I wonder if this is a headhunting thing I wonder if they headhunted him and picked him out as someone that could maybe lead them um into the future or if it was something that they had open and let people apply or if there was a short list of people I wonder I wonder um Bay does not disclose annual sales. In the past two years, Garota has been leading the digital transformation for the brand, which includes redesigning e commerce and launching on Tmall and WeChat in China. I'm proud. Wow, man, it's a big job in it. You forget all you forget that side of things, isn't it? When it comes to Far East, when it comes to Asia, when it comes to what that whole section of the world where they are just crazy about fashion and they spend money and also it's very um region pacific so you have to also use wechat bebo all these sort of platforms that are only obviously specific in that area they have to kind of tap into too so it's a massive job um i'm proud to be appointed as a new creative director as a brand it's very dear to my heart has been worn in my family from generation to generation from grandma to myself said this we're in a career in a thing okay cool um but yeah let's see man I'm I'm excited to see what he's going to do. I think he's going to absolutely smash it personally for me. Uh, let's get rid of this. <laughs> um, and I was looking actually at at previous collections. I think from here, right, 2017, and just overlooking on some of the cover images. And it doesn't really have a lot to work with from this or from the recent years. And I think you know it's going to be a stark contrast to what was available here in terms of the look and the feel. Um, let's see, 2017 was this, right? So this might have been one of Pablo's last collections. But he's got a good platform to basically work and basically do his thing, I think, in that regard. But let's see. I think this might have been his last collection. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, baby, Pablo um, started getting his head. Yeah, cool. So let's see what Pablo did in Pablo Coppolo did in his last collection. One of his last collections when he before he left. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Rugi can do a good job there, man. He doesn't, you know, again, it's, don't get me wrong. It's all well-designed clothes. It all looks really cool. But for the most part, he's going to be able to smash this out of, the, out of the park, man. Let's not deny that. So, yeah, big him up, man. Big him up. Um, happy for the dude. Again, another win for streetwear. And so inspiring for kids coming up to know that you can go from designing cigarette shirts and having a streetwear brand, evolving it into a kind of ready-to-wear fashion brand, having it basically show in Paris, having showrooms over there, you know rubbing shoulders with the right people and then just doing it in a real slow methodical way to the point where you get headhunted by a brand like that to do your thing amazing hopefully he keeps doing both things at the same time he's young enough to do it i think you know i think he's a hard worker and obviously he likes to graft so i'm sure he'll be able to do both things at the same time because i feel like his brand route <clears throat> would actually get better from the experience that he's had that he's going to have with this luxury brand i think so same way that we're seeing now i mentioned before i feel like matthew williams Alex is far better now than it was previously because he's got this experience of working with a fashion with luxury fashion house having the access to all the resources they have access to the way of working maybe his abilities have been fine-tuned he's discovering different talents maybe shortcomings that he needs to help with blah 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 so I'm sure Rude will actually improve so if you're a Rude customer don't be sad because I think your products that you buy from them will actually get better over the years so yeah big him up big him up nice to see another win for streetwear the most important force in fashion overall but definitely taking over menswear like a big 
big big way if you're in st martin's now studying menswear in a conventional sense switch it study streetwear join a course somewhere online whatever star brand whatever it may be because that's actually the best way to get into those hallowed walls of these luxury fashion houses than learning you know the old tired methods from all these fashion institutions that are very rigid you know be free screen print a shirt cut something out stick it on there put it there whatever it may be and you know you never know where you may be you could be the next matthew williams you could be the next virgil you can be the next heron preston there's so many opportunities for you out there so definitely if you're a young designer looking to make a way out there then definitely i would say take a peek into street where there's many many opportunities for you there